What's up, wrestling fans? You are listening to the Wrestle Report episode six with Phil and Don. I'm Phil. I'm Don. And we took a little not planned vacation. It's been about two weeks since our last episode. Um, we didn't really plan that because a lot of wrestling has had recently. Uh, so today is just going to be kind of a catch up episode on everything we haven't given our opinions on. And then next week we'll get back into uh, the grand scheme of things. So originally we were going to do something for payback, kind of do our predictions like we plan to do for everything else. But I think that would have put way too much effort into it, way more effort than they put into the show, considering it was only a week after SummerSlam and they just kind of threw it all together. So that to me, that show wouldn't have been worth um, reviewing match by match anyway. So let's just jump to, you know, the big news on the show is Roman Reigns, I think we can say, is now fully heel with Paul Heyman and winning the Universal title. And WWE just has this funny way of they finally give you that thing that you've been wanting, but they do it in a way that you're like, well, not like that. Like, that's not, you know, and and that's kind of what happened here. Um, I'll let you go first. The the heel Roman Reigns, I think it's finally happened, but, like, it's a little weird the way, the way it finally went down. Oh, yeah. I felt like um, I don't I don't really like the fact that they do that, um, that they start the match already when only two competitors in the match, when it should be the three competitors. And, yes, he did come in and, and Roman, uh, uh, Bron, uh, Bron and, and uh, Bray, did, they did get some licks on him. Yeah. But but they, 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 they fought for, like, ten minutes already before Roman even came out. And then he finally signed the contract, and then he comes out. I have oh, so I, many issues with everything about this, and I'll try and get them all in there. One, when the match starts, if the announcers would have immediately been like, oh, this match has started and Roman Reigns isn't even out here, that would have helped because they really didn't even mention Roman for like five minutes. They just started calling the match like it was a one-on-one -on -one match, and I really got to the point where I didn't think they were going to comment on it. And then the whole coming out and signing the contract – after the bell is rang, like, I'm not a lawyer, but I feel like any contract has some sort of time limit on it. So, like, how can you sign something? I mean, an NFL player can't, like, sign a new contract in the second quarter and then run out there and play linebacker. So, I don't understand how this uh, – I get it. It's wrestling. But, like, it still has to make logical sense. And, like, yeah. Heyman should have at least, I don't know, the next night – talked about how he made this work or whatever but um the fact that he won is not the argument i think a heel roman is kind of what wwe needs right now anyway but the way it happened just let me scratch left me scratching my head the whole time oh yeah for sure um i would like to see what's next i know that we, we, we're going to talk about what's next for roman uh, mm. uh clash of champions but um i want to see what, what's going to happen after that uh i know this is this next match is going to have is a filler match really Mm -hmm. what's, what's coming next but it is i get we can go ahead and talk on this now the it is filler no doubt but it's interesting because it's not um i hate to do this but which uso brother is it that is in the this, this is this is jay that's okay i wanted to, i wanted to make sure before i said the name because i know the others hurt so that's another <laughs> yeah yeah others. jimmy yeah jimmy's hurt yeah so um it is intriguing i i when they care about it, Night of Champions is supposed to be a big deal. So to have like a throwaway universal title match. And I only say that because Jey Uso is obviously a twin brother and he's been in a tag team his whole career. If there was only one Uso brother, that one Uso brother would probably be one of the most over guys on the roster because they're both very talented. Um, oh, yeah. You know, he'd be, he'd be up there with a Shelton Benjamin and a Cedric Alexander and got and Ricochet and guys that, you know, a lot of those guys we're going to talk about here in a little bit as well. But yeah, it, it, it's – I can't even put it into – it'd be like – but I can't even say like a Dudley – like Devon Dudley just main eventing a pay-per-view, like out of the blue. Obviously, Bubba Ray Dudley went on to, you know, become like a main event guy on his own. But, uh, I mean, if they did it for the sake of like you didn't know where this was going, like hats off to them because I didn't know where it was going. But um, do you think Jimmy makes a – I don't know where he is. Obviously, Roman Reigns is winning, but do they make this really compelling? Do they – you know, have the other brother come back and give you a lot of, of false finishes and Naomi getting involved and, you know, other things. Cause they are, you know, I guess they're cousins too, is there, you know, that family is very hard to put together, but like, 
do you bring other family members in in the lead up to to talk to them about like you know fighting amongst family or anything like that's the only way to make this interesting is to really drive all that home I would think yeah um well the thing is you only have one more week because Clash of Champions is uh next week next next Sunday so um I think it's a little too late for that but this is what I see is gonna happen this is what what I think is gonna happen okay I think Roman's gonna win Roman's gonna win Sure. Hands down, it's not, he's not going to lose. He's not going to lose his first title defense. Then you're going to have Paul Heyman talk to Jay Uso and be like, "Hey, you should become, um, you should come become with us, mm-hmm. and you'll be. We could, we could run, we could run SmackDown. When your brother comes back, we could have a dynasty going on. Yeah, I love that. And like, have, have a faction of, of of people. And then you can even throw, you could throw Naomi in there too. Oh yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole group, it, 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 the whole family. Yeah, the whole family. But I feel like if you're gonna throw Naomi in there, then you have to throw Tamina in there because Tamina is also their cousin too. That's fair. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, a, I think that I think that'd be pretty cool, though. Yeah, Samoan family run by Paul Heyman, I think, is that extra little because they've, you know, they've been involved as baby faces. Obviously, the Usos and Roman together, you know, have done some stuff. But to give them all. Because the Usos have proved that they can actually be a great heel team. Because they, oh, yeah. they they ran as a heel for, you know, a good year or so, maybe longer than I realized. Um, so, yeah, the fact they're able – they could pull that off easily when, when Jimmy comes back. And that's my thing is I don't know where his timetable is. So um, – Yeah, I think he's, he's going to be out for a while. So, I think that will be a good pairing too because mm-hmm. then, hey, you could do that with um, – uh, have them go for the tag team titles. Yeah. You could you – could, Pull all the gold on Roman, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And it's also good, too, because I, I believe back in the day, Paul Heyman actually actually uh, managed one of their family members, two of their family members mm-hmm. um, back in the day. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. But I do, rem- I do remember hearing something like that before. Right. So I think be, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool, too, as well. Not Heyman's been around so long that he can even just say, like, I was there when you're – uncle and your father were were wrestling in you know and at the top of their game and i've always respected this family and you know he'll he'll be an honorary member of the of the samoan wrestling family now like Heyman will will say things <laughs> like that and um i mean as long as you got Heyman, any of this can work so um the match again uh, if we we're not doing who booked the shit this week because we're just catching up but if we were that whole concept would definitely have been it and Again, we're not doing who booked this, but you just you said Night of Champions is already next week. Who scheduled this pay per view schedule for this year? That is what three pay per views in five weeks. If if my math is right, yeah, because yeah, um, yeah, because after payback, it was supposed to be four, uh, it was four weeks mm-hmm. to to um to Night of Champions. Mm-hmm. So it's like I don't know, I don't know what they're doing because there's a lot of there's a lot of uh not. It, so we're seeing a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Um, we we're gonna see the whole Randy Orton Drew McIntyre match again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna see, and we're gonna see uh the Bailey and Bailey and um Nikki Cross match. Mm-hmm. The only new match I've ever seen is Jey Uso versus Roman. Right. Which while it might be entertaining, I don't think anyone's ever like clamored for that match. You know, yeah. either. So, um, yeah, it's again, I typically like Night of Champions. I like the whole, you know, some people don't love that the gimmick of it is just, we got belts. Look at all the belts we have. But like, I do enjoy <laughs> um, one thing totally off topic a little bit. Um, but I guess I can bring this up now. Uh, Sami Zayn is, is back, obviously. So, him and AJ and Jeff are in, you know, fighting for the IC title. And Sammy saying he never lost it, and I do love a good, like, two-belt storyline in that. Uh, when he came back to SmackDown and he was, you know, trying to talk to Cesaro and Nakamura, and they were in the champion's locker room, and they're like, Sammy, you shouldn't be in here. You're not really a champion anymore. And he's like, what do you mean? I got the belt right here. I've never heard of the concept of a champion's locker room, but I wish they'd have come up with it years ago because I love that. There's a million stories that you can branch off of just having a champion's locker room. I, I love that. That's like oh, the yeah. MVP of the of backstage, you know? <laughs> the VIP round of backstage. <laughs> right. I mean, like, when I heard that, I'm like, that's that's funny. I've never heard that story before. I mean, if anything, you've heard of, like, the heel dressing room and the baby face dressing room and all that. But um, 
no, if the if the championship locker room is a new concept now, I'm here for it because that just opens up so many uh, storylines. But um, while we're talking about that, I'm happy to see Sami Zayn back. I'm glad he finally. I guess he was in Canada this whole time, and I'm sure he was. He's a rather. Um, he's a progressive guy, but uh, I think he had no issues staying back when the virus was at its peak. He was not going to risk his health. Uh, for it but I think he feels comfortable enough maybe in the Thunderdome situation that he can just come to Florida be in Florida and be fine um, I'm surprised they didn't just shoot right with the two belts Jeff Hardy and Sami Zayn right away like AJ Styles is still very much a part of that feud um, mm-hmm. I assume I don't know what's what's next like you said but like this must lead to a modern day Shawn Michaels Razor Ramon where you have Jeff Hardy and Sami and the two belts in a ladder match. Like, I don't see this this concluding any other way because any two-belt storyline has to have a ladder match so somebody can win both belts, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised about that, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad about that either because you got three good competitors um, uh, in AJ Styles, uh, Sami Zayn, and Jeff Hardy. Um, I would actually like to see Sami win because mm-hmm. I feel like he, he didn't really get a chance to, to – to claim his title, mm-hmm. to, to, to go against people for the title. I think he only had one match, and that was against Daniel Bryan. At WrestleMania. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, at least he had that, yeah. Um, um, so, I, I, I think it'll be – I think it should be Sami Zayn winning the match. Yeah. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole IC title, I mean, really since they've changed the design, which the IC belt is one of my favorite – like, it's, it's behind me here. That oval design is the one I love. But, like – even like, like there's nothing wrong with that classic design. And, um, you know, I've complained to you about this, the new design. I hate there's no color in it, even if it was on a white strap and then it was gold and there was some blue in the globes and it kind of paid homage to the one that's behind me here. Like I don't like it that much more, but it's like, I look at that belt and I just, there's no attachment to it. You know, Mm -hmm. the new IC belt, I, I, it's just numb. I feel nothing for it. Whereas the new U S title, I don't know that we've touched on this on the show, but after about a day or two of looking at it, I actually really like the new U.S. title. Yeah, I believe we talked. I believe we did. But okay. yeah, I, I I like it. I like it a lot more actually uh, than than the original. But uh, a little off topic. Mm-hmm. Talking about title belts. Yeah. You know, I was actually watching um, Armageddon 2000 uh-huh. today. Okay. And and um, I don't know if you know fans. If you don't know what Armageddon 2000 is, I want you to go check it out. That's the six man Hell in a Cell match between. The best in the business, basically. That is actually, um, before you tell your story, that is my cousin who I grew up watching wrestling with. That is his favorite match of all time. So shout out to John because he'll smile <laughs> hearing that, hearing you talk that <laughs> match up. So continue, but I wanted to get that in there. <laughs> um, but, but, but I saw the European title, the European Championship. I would actually like to see that come back. Yes, it might be too many championships out there, mm-hmm. but why not? Yeah. Right. You got the twenty four seven championship. Just might as well bring back that championship. They should bring it back on <laughs> NXT UK. Even I think could yeah, give them yeah, a mid card belt. Yeah, because um, they, they only had the champ, the, the world he- the world heavyweight UK champion. UK, yeah, and, and the ta- and the tag belts. And yeah. The tag, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, why not bring the European championship? That'd be pretty dope. I'll I'll allow that too. <laughs> and you you want to talk about just a gorgeous looking belt? That European title, man. I I loved it. Oh like, right, yeah, me too, man. And some of the, one of the best things about it too is like obviously we we just talked about all the different versions of the IC title. Any other title that you might love from the WWE or F, there's at least two or three designs. The European title only had one design because it was around for only I think three, maybe four. Oh, actually, let me, let me get that. Yeah, okay, maybe five. I think ninety seven to oh three, depending yeah, on the month. Around, so around that. Yeah. yeah. So, but in general, not a long time. And uh, so the fact that it had the one design the entire time is is pretty cool uh, yeah i think a lot of people have clamored for the european title i think a lot of people thought rusev w- would bring it back uh when he when he won the u.s title that never happened um more on him later spoilers uh once we get all this <laughs> wwe news but um yeah man i can talk about belts all day so we have other things to get to we yeah. have to do it you know what that actually sets up perfectly uh next week's top three let's do our top three championship designs so Okay. Look out for that cool. next week. Yeah. Cool. Usually we're <laughs> usually we're scrambling to think of one like an hour before the show, but now it's it's good that we have it uh have it set up. And again, that'll be best looking belts. 
It's sure just okay. based yeah. off the design. So, all right, cool. So um, we touched on this a minute ago, or I mentioned these guys anyway. Uh, the Hurt Business has a uh, business is good because they're adding another member. I think I called this. If I didn't, you did. But somebody mentioned this on the last show. Um, Cedric Alexander turned his back on Ricochet and Apollo to join the Hurt Business after the seed was planted when he didn't pick him to go in a tag match against the guys and MVP shows up and is like, listen, man, they don't respect you. Like, why don't you come with us? Like, we know what you're worth and all this good stuff. And uh, I'll be honest, I did not catch Raw yesterday. I had a lot going on. That's, we were going to record yesterday, and I had to push it back yet another day. But um, from what I could see, that whole setup was was pretty awesome with the, with the Hurt Business. And they – I said it a couple weeks ago, but now it's definitely true. They're, like, the best thing going on Raw right now, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially now that they uh, – supposedly they they broken up um, – um, Angel Garza and Andrade. Mm-hmm. So, so now, now, now they really are the only best thing that that they have right now. Uh, so, what do you think is next for them? So, you got Bobby is the U.S. champ. Um, MVP seems to like he'll wrestle from time to time, but he really is just the manager mouthpiece role because he's he is getting up there in age, but like he could easily put on great matches like here and there when needed, but like. I think his in he's got such you know younger and talented guys around him now that he kind of can pick and choose a match here and there, but just kind oh, yeah. of uh, it's so funny when he came back for the rumble. Uh, he told a story that he he came back for the rumble and part of the deal was he wanted to wrestle Rey Mysterio on Raw the next day because Rey Mysterio is his son's favorite wrestler, so he wanted his son to be able to witness him wrestling Rey Mysterio, and that was supposed to be his whole contract. It was a Royal Rumble spot and a, and a one-off on Raw, and he was supposed to go on his merry way. And um, I'm glad he stuck around. He's really been nothing but an asset since he's been back. I mean, he's he's been great since back in the day, and he's in a completely different role now, but he's just – everything he does, is it turns to gold, I feel. Oh, yeah. Now, I would like to see this, though. The next the next thing for the Hurt Business, mm-hmm. have Shelton and, and Cedric go after the Tag Team Championships. That would be a great team for sure. Go, yeah, go yeah, go against go against the Street Profits for the for the Raw Tag Team Championship. But I would like to see what's gonna happen also after October because you know October is supposed to be the big draft. Yeah, I don't know if they've officially <laughs> announced that, but that does seem to be where where things are going with that. Um, I've even heard rumors that they want to finally go back to one set of tag belts because they had a little square off between the Street oh, Profits yeah. and. Uh, uh, and um, Cesaro and Nakamura. So I don't know if, if that's what they're teasing. I mean, every once in a while, they'll throw a champion versus champion match out just to like, you know, or they might be setting it up for Survivor Series because a lot of that turns into, you know, brand warfare nowadays, which I do like. I prefer yeah. the I prefer the traditional elimination matches. But like last year's, when they threw NXT in the mix, that was one of their better concepted shows in yeah. a long time. So uh, I'm here for that Man, if I'm, they pull I'm that off again. I'm praying to God that they do that again, though, and let yeah. NXT fight as well. Mm-hmm. I think that would be pretty cool. Because then you, we, we could have matches like, uh, okay, you got Finn Balor, Drew McIntyre, and Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. I, I would like to see that. Hell even yeah. Though, I mean, I would like, even if, if you threw Adam Cole in there, I would love to see that even mm-hmm. more. Yeah. Um, that's why it kind of hurt me last year when Adam Cole wasn't going against, when it wasn't Brock Lesnar, Adam Cole, and – um. Who was the, who was the Raw? Was it Rollins? At the time, I don't know. It's but I question. remember, I, I remember the mid card. The mid card one was great because it was like AJ, Roderick Strong, and somebody I think. Cause and, North- uh, and Shinsuke. Yeah, that was great. That was that was a match of that night for sure. Um, I'm so glad you mentioned Finn Balor because again, that's one of the things <laughs> I wanted to get Segways. to. With, yeah. With um, <laughs> so we were originally gonna do a show after the uh, fatal four way sixty minute Iron Man match, right? So I'm glad we didn't because the way it ended, obviously, like the ending execution was fantastic. The way that you think Finn's gonna win, and he uh, Adam Cole runs in, gets a knee in there, and steals another point with like five seconds to go. That was fantastic. That was done incredibly well. It almost made you forget that you just watched an hour. For, to see a new champion for nothing like i couldn't be mad at it because again it was just done so well but at, at the end of the day you kind of promised us a champion and we sat here for an hour and um 
you know, but it was, <laughs> again, I have mixed feelings about it because it was just done so well. And yeah. it did give us um, the next week, obviously, um, Bauer and Cole. I do think uh, Bauer winning was the right call because I don't know what their plans for him. They clearly have plans for Adam Cole, obviously, because his contract is coming up. So they got to give him kind of stuff that would keep him interested and want him to resign. But um, no, Finn makes the perfect champion because he's been on the main roster. He's been there before. He's the perfect, like, measuring stick for some of these younger guys coming up. Um, I'm not totally sure who he'll face next necessarily, but no, Finn as NXT champion again, um, I think it really helps that brand right now. It's a shame oh, how everything happened with Keith Lee and, and Cross, but um, they've made the best of a bad situation, I think, putting Finn at the top again. Oh, definitely. Uh, I, I see them going um, now that the UK's back. Mm-hmm. Why not let Finn Balor go against Walter uh, now? Because, you know, that was supposed to be the feud before, before the whole yeah. COVID-19 thing. Mm-hmm. So why not Why not let uh, show up on um, NXT UK tonight or today? Yeah, they started today. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll have to look into that for next week for sure. Yeah, we're recording this on uh, Tuesday night, so we will get this out. You know, you'll, you should hear it before yeah. any of that good stuff happens. But, <laughs> um, but no, so am I overthinking it, like – or do you have the same feeling like I love the way the match ended the fatal four way, but like the fact that you did just watch an hour to find the new champion, like, yeah, am I overthinking uh, it or, you know, no, no, not at all. Uh, because it was still great. Even though, even though, yes, the, the, the finish, I would like to see a decisive winner. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I wasn't mad because we still got we got a good match the next week anyway, so I was, yeah. I was, I was mm-hmm. okay with that. So that made up for the for the uh, for that finish for me. And when I was watching, I was like, "Oh my gosh, five seconds! Oh, he does a knee! Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, he's gonna scroll! He got one, two, and I'm like, oh, he's not gonna get it! He's not gonna get it! Three! Oh, he got it! Yeah. I was like, okay, cool, cool. Because they do that all the time, where the guy yeah. like one, two, and bam, like ran out of time. So like it, they did turn it on his head. That was a very good. Um, again, if it almost made me forget that I was supposed to see a new champion today, but um, yeah. no, it gave NXT. You know, they were on Tuesdays for for two weeks in a row. It gave them two great shows. It uh, upped their ratings. It put them in like the high eights. You know, eight hundred thousand range, uh, which is better than they've done recently. AEW, on the other hand, which will be another segue here. Um, the first week they ran unopposed, they were in 900s. And then last week, um, running unopposed, they finally cracked the million mark again for the first time in a while. Um, there's been rumors that NXT, um, you know, the, the network wants them to stay on Tuesdays because they prefer the numbers they're getting. And we're kind of learning what we always knew was the case is – WWE's perspective is we don't necessarily care their numbers. We just want them to take a chunk out of AEW's numbers. Like that is their sole purpose for being on uh, cable and not, or TV in general and not the network anymore. And I think we now know that for certain instead of just speculating it. Yeah. Well, I see, I always say this though, because they all, everyone, everyone says that WWE, um, they did this on purpose to, mm-hmm. the, uh, on Wednesdays and stuff. But people don't remember NXT was always on Wednesdays. Yeah, it was. It was, it was always on, it was always on on Wednesdays. Yes, it mm-hmm. was on the network, but it uh, but it was still on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. So like, if anything, AEW had a chance to do it on a different day. But no one wants to say that. But no, yeah. just just the, just saying. <laughs> the one the one thing I always wondered, like I think when it first came out, that was a question with a lot of people was like, oh, what made you pick the day you did? And the one thing is, being that the cons own the Jaguars, is they would never put it on Monday and they would never put it on Thursday because the Jaguars could potentially play yeah. on those days and then they're they're screwed. So that makes total yeah. sense. So really, they only had two days to choose from, Tuesday and Wednesday at that point, because you're not gonna put it on Friday. Uh, just because that's not a good – Friday night is not when you put on, you know – I love SmackDown the Death, but that's always been the secondary show for WWE, so they don't mind doing that. They don't mind bookending the week like that. But if you only have one cable show, um, to me, Wednesday, I love that it's on Wednesday. It's in the middle of the week. It, you know, your week can lead up to AEW, and then, you know, you finish it off on Thursday and Friday. But, um, yeah, really the only other day they could have feasibly done it was Tuesday, and now, of course, they've aired on Tuesday, and they've had decent numbers when they did. But um, 
I think if NXT was its own brand, they would seriously have to consider uh, staying on Tuesdays. But I'll, I'll say this, too, because I'm not – you know, I watch AEW a lot more, obviously. I'll be the first to admit that. But I'm in the camp that if these shows were consistently on different nights, they would both flirt with the million people mark almost every week. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think um, – they, bo- they do. They both kind of – take a chunk out of the other. And this is from the past two weeks of running unopposed, both uh, shows numbers have increased a lot. And then AEW just more so no big deal on that. But um, yeah. So this, this week starting tomorrow, they're going to go back on, on Wednesday again. So I'm curious how the, you know, uh, they're going to go back to canceling each other out to some degree, Um, (laughs) but we'll see if they can, if they can still crack the 900s for a while, like, I think that'd be great. But I think it's proof that, you know, when NX, some NXT people, like, they, they want that brand to win, but, like, when it's not all, like, they're going to turn around and watch AEW. And I'm sure that happens oh, yeah. the same way. Same way, like, I, I watched, especially with that Fatal 4-Way, I had to see it. And then the Cole and Finn Balor, I needed to watch that as well. So, I mean, they, they put on great shows when they were running unopposed and they knew they could get the numbers. So, like, good for them. Um yeah, I mean, I, I still I would enjoy the um, the ability to just see both brands at full strength, and I understand this it's a business, and I think we can, again we admit that NXT is there to get in the way of AEW right now, if nothing else, and and that's a little disrespectful on them because it's a great brand too, and I would love to see them do what's best for them and not just what hurts uh, hurts AEW the most, you know. True, I feel that. Yeah. Um, so originally I wanted to do like a whole big AEW, like all out review that, uh, the weekend of it. And I just got super busy and donned in as well. So we're just going to touch on some of the highlights of all out, which I thought was a great show, probably the longest show they've done. Uh, it went till midnight. Usually their shows are done by 11 at the latest. So like they really did, you know, they had fans, which was, which was nice. Like, they, they still see them so far away. I'd love for them to kind of move those guys up so you just hear them more. I'm sure it's, it has to do with the social distancing. So, uh, you know, it is what it is on that. But um, overall, that was a great show. I'm just going to go down the, the bullet points here that I have of, of what made the show great. Um, first, I think the, the biggest uh, note is um, new tag team champions finally, FTR. Um, defeated Kenny Omega and Hangman Page in a great match. Some people argued it was a little long. I think I know why it was as long as it was. I'll get to that in a minute. But in general, um, it's just this great storyline of the elite is kind of crumbling. FTR winning the titles was almost secondary. But obviously they can have that division, you know, wrapped up for a good while. But um, now we got the Bucks are mad at Hangman. And now the, the team of Hangman and Kenny are split up and, uh, when they when they lost the titles, Kenny Omega was trying to storm out and get in the car and told the Young Bucks to get in with them. They didn't, so he just drove off. So, like, I think one of the most compelling things on AEW right now is the elite has kind of imploded. Cody's not on TV. He's nowhere to be found right now. Um, it's really interesting. I think people thought, like, this, they were just going to run everything, uh, you know, once the show started. And they've put themselves in, in a pretty crazy predicament, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I know I know you didn't get to watch the show live anything but you I mean catching the uh, the highlights of it and stuff I think the reason that match went so long was because during the Matt Hardy Sammy Guevara match there was a very nasty injury to Matt Hardy and I'm sure you've seen that Um, that was pretty scary I truly thought for a minute that maybe Matt was no longer with us I was he he's so I don't know if it's spray tan, but he is so tan right now. And when he hit the pavement, his head just got. Like, you can ask like Billy Jake and and Jody and everyone that watched with me. I was literally shouting at the TV, "Look how pale his face is!" I truly got scared for like his life. Like you go back and watch it, he just looked like a ghost. Like the color left his face when he hit the pavement. I'm sure anyone listening to this has seen the the clip by now. If not, uh, that he spear Guevara spears him off like a scaffolding trying to go through tables. They overshoot the table, um, and Matt hits, like, the second one, but the first one is behind him, so his head just smacks the, the ground, and it was it was rough. It was not um, – it really killed the mood for, I'd say, the next two matches. Really, it only picked back up for the tag title match, and I think that one went so long because it had to make up for the time that Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara didn't get to do. 
Yeah, but then, and then at the end of the day, you look at it like, dang, it's still a long show. Like, mm-hmm. they could have still probably ran, ran with it, um, <clears throat> cut some of that time off from from, yeah, the, that's from that, that match. Mm-hmm. But that's just nitpicking, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's true. They, like, there's no, you know, it, maybe their goal was to run that long to prove that they could. I don't know. But um, there's obviously a lot of controversy on, you know, Matt Hardy finishing the match. And I put that in quotation marks because by finish the match I mean they ran over to the scaffolding to do their closing spot like he didn't take another bump he did climb a scaffolding which I don't know that I was comfortable with him doing after that bump uh for you know Sammy to just fall through you know like honestly a spot we've seen a million times and look nowhere near as bad as the one that Matt just took so um you know he did come out on AEW the next night and saying like uh, you know, it was scary, but I'm I'm going to go get healthy and, and, you know, stuff like that won't happen again. He said that him and Sammy's feud is done and they're just going to kind of hit the reset on Matt when he when he gets back. I'm just, you know, I'm happy that overall uh, he's healthy. It was unfortunate that it happened. Um, again, I don't blame AEW for the match continuing necessarily. Had they just stopped it, I don't think anybody would have blamed them. But um I don't know. I don't feel that they needed to run over and just have Sammy fall off something to end the match. Like they, yeah. they, they would have uh, been okay with uh, the fans would have understood both watching at home and live. If they just kind of called this one off and they almost did like they rang the bell, they got a shot of the announcers and Jr. was trying to like piece the story together. And then the match just restarted again. So, I mean, they could have gone either way with it. So, I mean, I think it's water under the bridge now. It's not much we can say after the fact. Yeah, I know, but I know like um, Tony Khan was getting a lot of a uh, lot of heat for allowing that match to to continue. Yeah. Um, after watching it, um, and then saying that he was he he was good, he was fine and stuff. Then come to find out that he was in the hospital after the match, um, and uh, he had a concussion and everything, and he still allowed him to finish the match. Yeah, hey, he was he was getting he was getting a lot of heat. The first actual like bad publicity of AEW has come yeah. has struck. That's true. That's that is definitely the first one. Um Matt Hardy's wife absolutely blasting the company on Twitter. That's not the first time she's done that. So it doesn't it doesn't doesn't mean as much just because she's done it to TNA. She's done it to WWE. Like and when Matt was at Dynamite the next week, Rebby was with him. And I feel like that's because Matt made her go and kind of have a hard heart with Tony Khan and clear the air. Cause he's like, I can't have you blasting these guys. Like I work here, you know, like WWE is yeah. one thing cause there's this big corporation, but I think they feel a little more unified in AEW. So you can't just have, you know, your wife spread on what she said in the moment that you said it was a hundred percent justified. If you, uh, you know, you're, you're worried about your husband, obviously. So like, I can't oh, wait yeah, for, for that. Sure. And she even admits like the stupidest person in this scenario was Matt Hardy, my husband, she puts it, because he's the one that did the spot. So that's on him, I guess. And it was, it's weird. It was a relatively safe spot if the tables were just pushed out a little more. Like, we're, we're not having this conversation if the tables are just dragged out a little bit more. So um, it's oh, yeah. one, of those, one of those freak things. Uh, overall, just glad that he's okay. Uh, the main oh, yeah, event. Sure, 100%. Yeah. The, the main event of All Out was MJF against John Moxley for the World Championship. And this – did have a great fight feel to it, uh, storyline. Other than the – I don't love MJF, political MJF. Like, I get why they're doing it. They're spoofing the election. It's coming up, whatever. But the match itself and the storyline of Moxley can't use the paradigm shift uh, really made for a great match. And the fact that he ends up winning with it anyway when the ref's back is turned, I don't know if they're going to bring that up because, tr- truthfully, MJF being the, like – you know, rich guy that'll sue you over nothing. Like, I feel like he has a real case here that he should get another match or even, you know, just because he's who he is. Like, oh, he violated the contract. He, like, hand me the title. Like, I don't know that they're going this way because Lance Archer won a battle royal to be the – and it looks like they're just kind of moving on to that. So as much as I love the ending because, like, it really made you go, like, oh, shit, he still hit the move even though he wasn't supposed to. The ref didn't see it. Holy crap. But – if they're not going to touch on it, then it might not have – like, it is. it does leave me with some questions that I would like answers to, and I don't think I'm going to get them. But other than that, it was a great match. But, I mean, do you feel the same way? Like, I feel like we yeah. deserve a little bit of of an explanation there, you know? Yeah, they definitely – this is something that WWE would do. Yeah. 
yes, they'll exactly. do something. They'll do something, and then that, they'll give you the explanation of what um what happened. Mm-hmm. Now, now Wednesday, if uh when um last Wednesday when um when uh, MJF came out, they should just have him come out and say like, hey, I want my rematch. Um, uh, I'm still undefeated. Right here. I'm still undefeated. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't lose because mm-hmm. he he should have been disqualified right there, and I should be the champion right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. They didn't touch on that. And then, like, what what they could also do too is throw another match, have yeah. another match on Dynamite. That's mm-hmm. that's a right there. That would give you ratings right there. Yeah. Um, but now they already scheduled a match for Moxley versus Archer. I think it was like October fourteenth. Yeah, I'll say um, that is still a little bit of ways because that's their one year anniversary of Dynamite, so it's still a big yeah. enough show, whatever. Um, and again, it's only been a week. I'm sure MJF gets a lot of promo time. He's gonna bring it up at some point but they should do it sooner than later, I think, because, like, yeah. I think we're all thinking the same thing. It's like, you know, even though Moxley was the babyface, he did violate the contract. Like, when you look at it that way, you know. Yeah. But would you really say Moxley is a, is a, is a um, babyface? I, I would think he's, like, a tweener, just like, like Stone Cold. Yeah, he's a tweener, he's like but, but anyone facing MJF is the babyface at that moment because oh. nobody's a better yeah. heel than him yeah. but no i mean you're you're right i think in this yeah in this instance he was supposed to be the baby face but yeah i mean in general he's very much tweener because he's he's broken dude's arms like the dude in the dark order with the chair and like he's done some heel of shit so you're right he's not like a yeah. white meat baby face by any means but he's supposed to be the good guy champion you know for now very anyway true. and of course i think you uh-huh. know facing archer he's a more clear-cut baby face than that too so that helps oh yeah yeah uh, i do want i do want to touch upon um what 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 happened in that bar royal? Okay, with um, Darby Island. Darby oh, Island almost nice. died. <laughs> he almost died. And once again, I didn't watch the whole show. I watched yeah. the only highlights, and that that highlight was in there when he was in the body uh, body or the body suit, the body mm-hmm. cast or body bag. There we go. And throwing and he definitely landed on the top of his head. And with it being body bag full of thumbtacks on top of that, it was yeah. that was gnarly. Uh, thank God he <laughs> threw him on the stage. Imagine if he threw him straight to the ground, you know, like oh, that would God. have been, then he is dead. And we can't talk <laughs> about that without talking about the other thing that happened in the battle Royal. I'm sure you saw the Matt Seidel clip, right? Yeah. <laughs> Poor Come Matt, on. man. Yeah, I have, man. I have met Matt Seidel. I have a Matt Seidel and an Evan Bourne autograph. He was nice enough to give me both names. Me and Jeremy actually shout out to Jeremy. And, um, yeah, man, we all saw that, and we all – nobody laughed. We all just got sad because we know that we've, <laughs> yeah. we've seen this guy he's do this great, move. Man. He's done it perfectly, effortlessly for a decade, right? So you know it's not him being like a bum, right? Like, And um, yeah. I don't know if you ever watch Being the Elite. Um, I only watch it here and there, but I will say they really wrap this up nicely. Uh, Akira Tozawa, I don't know if you've ever seen him there. He's the dude with the baby oil. They basically ran a story on BTE that he put baby oil on that turnbuckle, and that's why Matt <laughs> slipped. So they, like, backdoored <laughs> a funny angle into it. And um, it's, it's, it's a shame, though, because if that didn't happen, then um, we'd be talking about, oh, cool, Matt Seidel's in AEW. That can make for some good stuff. And I do think – I mean, the guy's amazingly talented. I think he will eventually – you know, I assume it wasn't a one-time thing, so, like, he'll, he'll carve out a little bit. Um, for himself in AEW. I want to see him face Jack Evans. That is number one what I want to see uh, those two guys go at it. Um, but, yeah, poor Matt. And, um, yeah, that was that was rough to see <laughs> at the time. Like, <laughs> like, I laugh about it now, but when I first saw it, I was like, oh, no, that's going to live on the Internet forever. <laughs> you know, like, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, ask for a worse debut. That's Shockmaster territory, I think. It's the that's 2020 – yeah, everyone was actually comparing it to that too, and I was like, "Dang, that's not good. That's not yeah. good at all, man." Not at all. <laughs> so, um, two more quick notes here, uh, just to wrap up all the AEW things. First, the other thing on the pay per view, the Mimosa Mayhem match. I don't know if you caught any of the clips on this, the Orange Cassidy and. Uh, yeah, I saw some clips. I gotta it. say, I thought this would be ridiculous, and it was, but it wasn't. It was more of a match than I expected. Like. It was like it had a story. It had a beginning, middle, end, and um, the one thing I'll say, like the match. I'll start here. The match was a lot better of an actual match than I expected it to be. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I what I saw too. I said the same thing. I was yeah. gonna say 
it's not really, it's not no gimmick, no, 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 your original gimmick, gimmick match is actually the actual match, but you just like get tossed into the middle. Right. It didn't actually take out the integrity of like them showing off the word. Here's my one thing. The one, this is, you could argue this is elevated Orange Cassidy because he's gotten to face Chris Jericho three times and that's great, mm-hmm. but he got over doing the sloth kicks and the barely raising his, he's now had like three to four matches where he's like balls to the wall. Can he really go back to being, I think he's just another wrestler now. I don't think he's going to be a popular one, but yeah. he's kind of, his gimmick has kind of changed whether they wanted it to or not. So I'm interested to see yeah. what they do with him moving forward. Cause he can't just go back to the, I mean, he can do the hands in the pockets as like a taunt kind of, and he can do like the, I don't know. He can do some of it, but like his, his, his gimmick and persona has completely changed whether they want it to be or not now, you know? No, oh, yeah. He's definitely going to, he's, he's a whole, def, whole nother wrestler now. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think he needs to break away from the best friend, to be honest with you. Hmm. Um, I mean, cause, cause he's, he, I think he's a better single star than if anything, he's, he, he made the best friends, if anything. Yeah. Even though Trent's pretty good. Trent's, oh, yeah. Trent's pretty good. Trent's great. Um, I, I agree with you because, and really, he ha- kind of has been separate. They're more of like an alliance than a faction. You know what I mean? Like they're, you know, those are his boys, but if he goes off and does his own thing, it still works out. I'm trying to think of an example, like when guys have done this, but like, like even this isn't the best example, but like Spike Dudley is a Dudley boy, but there's plenty of times where he was just off doing his own thing. You know, I, I, I yeah. I could probably think of a better example, but that's the one that's in my head at the moment, you know? Uh, yeah, I get it. I got you. Yeah, that yeah. is actually a good one, actually. I, I, I don't know how I, I could forget about Spike Dudley. That was on my bullet back in the day. So one other thing that happened on All Out, um, Kip Sabian announced that him and Penelope Ford are engaged to be married. Congrats to them. And that on Dynamite, we would learn who his best man is because wrestling weddings are always ratings, I guess. Um, long story <laughs> short, they did a couple of funny skits like Brian Pillman Jr. came out and said, you said I'm the best man. I said, no, you're the best comma man, like in a text. And, you know, they did a couple of funny jokes like that. Um, but the actual best man that came out is uh, Miro, the former Rusev, is now in AEW. Um, he's a completely different character because he's uh, basically since he's been released, he's just been a twitch streamer playing video games and stuff and um the character isn't fully defined but in general uh how big of a move do you think it is rusev to AEW as miro the best man miro i think it was the best move um i would say behind the ftr going there that's the best move that AEW has had uh because rusev is, is great rusev is awesome he's charismatic he can fight. He can talk. He's great. He's gonna. He's gonna do good things. And that's. I think that was a big. That was one of the biggest losses that losses that uh, WWE had. Uh, they should. They should have been put a championship on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 the world title on him because he's great. Especially when you have Bruce Bay with Aiden English. Um, to this day, I always. I always hate WWE for that for ruining Bruce Bay. That Even was awesome. the. The thing with English, like, I would have liked that to be a full-blown tag team more. Like, them winning the belts, even. I think that would have been great. That would have been great, too, yeah. Yeah. And and I think it is a two birds with one stone thing because Kip Sabian was with um, Jimmy Havoc. They were a tag team, pretty pretty decent one in AEW, and then they had to release Jimmy Havoc. So this Mm -hmm. gives Kip another partner. And I'm curious, like, are they going to stick together long-term? Uh, or is eventually, you know, Miro going to be able to go off and do his own thing? I'm curious about that. Obviously, it's only been one week. We might even know more, you know, are they going to be in a tag match on Dynamite? Is Miro going to have a squash match on Dark, and they're going to build them up as just friends but separately, or are they like a team now? You know, it's it's mm-hmm. hard to say through one week, but um, definitely a great surprise. And, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, well, very interested to see uh, where it goes. He'd make a great um, – Again, he doesn't look like he's going to be a monster heel because monster heels can't plug their Twitch channels, you know? So, uh, <laughs> but I could see him even upsetting Brody Lee maybe for the TNT title at some point. Um, what I really want to see for that is off topic, but I'll throw it out there. The the uh, situation with Colt Cabana is heating up because they lost it all out. Uh, 
Cole Cabana got pinned, so Brody Lee was pissed at him. Um, I would love to see Colt – even – he doesn't need to be champion long-term, but I'd love to see Colt beat Brody Lee uh, for the title, and then, you know, he can drop it. Because you're not going to do, like, heel versus heel. So, you know, if yeah. you give it to Colt and then Colt can lose it to Miro, I think that's a good – even if he has it for three weeks or something, I think that'd be a great a great way to do that. Um, I got one last thing to bring up as we wrap up here. I think on the last show I mentioned – um, NWA was coming back doing their weekly pay-per-views. The first one aired tonight as we were recording this. I went ahead and bought – so it's $8 a pay-per-view. They're doing them weekly. Or for $23, you can buy them um, each month, like f- the four-pack. So it saves you a couple bucks that way. So I went ahead and bought the first bundle. So on the next show, I'm going to review what I thought of the whole thing just real quickly. And um, – Tonight's main event is Nick Aldis defending the NWA title against uh, Mike Bennett, formerly Mike Kanellis, released by WWE. So that is an interesting uh, storyline. You're going to see a lot of other independent guys that you've maybe heard of but not seen wrestle. So um, definitely check those out. Uh, it's um, primetime live. It's on Fight the Fight app. So, I'm, again, I haven't gotten to watch mine yet, but I do plan to. And if you like that old school style, like that they were bringing with the NWA power, it's a little different now. Um, it's kind of modernized that even, but it, it's definitely still got an old school feel to it. So um, if you're into that, definitely go check that out. And next week I'll probably have a little, some thoughts on that. And I can even shoot the clips over to you, Don. You can give an opinion on it too. Uh, but other than that, we are back in the saddle. Sorry for the two week break. Usually we'll warn you guys before we're going to take time off. Things just happen. Um, it sucked that it happened, you know, with two pay-per-views happening and uh, Rusev going to AEW and new champions here, there, and everywhere. But, you know, I think we caught up pretty good tonight. I uh, want to thank you guys for listening. As always, this has been the Wrestle Report Episode 6, and we'll catch you next time.